Hey guys, today I'll be showing you why you should switch to Gboard on your iPhone. So if this is useful for you, please leave a like and subscribe, and let's start the video. So before we even start, we're going to have to download it from the App Store. It's called Gboard like I've said. Just click on it, it's made by Google, and just download it from there. Now after it's downloaded, we can go ahead and open it, and then click on Get Started. Then enable full access by clicking the bar at the top, it says enabling full access. And then you can go ahead and click on Get Started. Then from here, it will take you to settings, and then you have to click on keyboards. Now after you click on keyboards, you'll have to allow full access and then allow. Now you'll be able to use Gboard in any app. The cool thing about Gboard is that you can add your own custom keyboard. So to do that, we can go ahead over to themes, and it'll show you all the themes that are available on this app. And of course, you can add your own image at the top, or you can choose from the Google images that they provide you, or with the gradients from below. But I just like to select the default black one. To customize your keyboard even more, just click on the pencil icon and then you'll be able to customize it. But before that, we're going to have to hold on the globe and then go to Gboard. Then it'll show you all the settings that you can customize your keyboard with. All of these are pretty straightforward, so if you read them, you'll probably know what they do. So I'm just going to go through these. The key colors is what shows up under the keys. And you can enable backgrounds, like the gray background uh, under the keys, or you can disable them. And also the key pop-ups is when you hold on a key, it shows up as bigger, I guess. And you can change the color of that too, so I put it to black and it's darker. But I like to keep this stuff at default, because it just looks better that way. You can also see a glide typing setting. I don't really have this on, I don't really like glide typing, but if you like it, you can change the color of like the trail that shows up whenever you move your finger across the keyboard and you can also change the size of that trail so I can make it even thicker and then it looks something like this but anyways that's all the settings you can change for your themes but this isn't the only settings that you can change there's also other keyboard settings you just go to the main menu and then click on keyboard settings from this menu then it will show you a list of every single setting that you can change for your keyboard so the first thing is glide typing I like to disable that you can keep it on if you want, and then there's all these other settings. I like to disable auto-correction and auto-capitalization, and then I don't know what block offensive words is. I turn it off and it doesn't really do anything, so I don't really think that works. And you can also disable show period on the keyboard if you want, so it just takes up less space. And if you like haptic feedback, and if you don't know what that is, it basically vibrates your phone a little bit. It's basically the same vibration that happens whenever you toggle a setting. So it's basically just that vibration whenever you click on a key. But if you want to turn it on, it actually feels better. So just try using that and see how it feels. And if you don't like it, you can always just turn it off. I also like to disable the number row. If you don't know what that is, it'll show like numbers on top of like your keyboard. I don't really like that. I could just click on the numbers at the bottom left and then see that. So that is most of the customization that you can do inside the app. You can also change the language and the keyboard layout of your keyboard just by clicking on languages. And then if you tap on English, you can change the keyboard layout. Or you can just go back and click on add language to add a new language. In my opinion, the coolest feature of them all is Google Translate. Inside of the keyboard, you can actually translate and send messages in other languages, even if you don't know the language. So if you click on the Google Translate icon, you can just click on got it. And then you can type text and then it will automatically translate it and you can send it. And it's better than just going to the website and then doing it because it takes more time. You can also paste stuff into Google Translate and then translate it back to your language. So you can basically have a conversation with someone even though you don't know their language. If you want to change the language, you can just click on the Google Translate icon and then select a language by clicking on the language and then you can select any language that Google Translate supports. On this keyboard, you can also search for GIFs. So if you're not using an app like iMessages where you can search for GIFs, or like Discord, you can also just use this keyboard and you can search for GIFs and you can send them. If I click on the Google icon, I can basically use the Google app on my keyboard, which is really, really cool. So I could go ahead and send links to anyone just by using my keyboard. If you're going to ask for something location-based, you're going to have to turn on location for it. You could just click on the blue button, but I'm not going to do that right now. And you can also search for YouTube videos to send on your keyboard. So just click on YouTube and then you'll be able to see YouTube videos and you can search by clicking on search YouTube. And then you can also do maps, but you have to enable location access. Also on the Gboard, there's an emoji section. Unlike on iOS, you're going to have to switch keyboards because the emoji keyboard is counted as another keyboard. 
but if you click on the emoji icon on Gboard, you'll be able to see all of the emojis. Honestly, the emoji layout looks better here because you can choose your own theme and it just looks a lot cleaner with the icons at the bottom. And from this section, you can also click on GIFs and stickers. And if you, know, if you don't know what these are, these are like kawaii faces, I don't really know what they're called. But these are special text faces that, if you wanted to do it on your iPhone, you would have to add a Japanese keyboard or something like that. And it just takes more time, but this is just easier. Just download the app and then you'll be able to use that. Also, if you want to have Gboard as your default keyboard on your iPhone, all you need to do is just go to General in Settings, and then click on Keyboard from there. Just scroll down and then click on Keyboard. And then click on the Keyboards, and then you can edit it and then move Gboard to the top. I've already done that. And you can also delete English US from here, but I recommend keeping it on if you have saved passwords because you can't access your passwords from the Gboard. But anyways, that's why you should switch to Gboard.